Hi, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Paul, and I'm a PhD student at the Offenburg University in Germany. And in this talk, I want to give you a high-level overview of our CVPR workshop paper, Adversarial Robustness Through the Lens of Convolution Filters. So I really want to give you a, a very broad overview, so I won't go into details. If you're interested in the details, please uh, look into the paper, or if you have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out to me, either directly or just post a comment here. So in case you're unfamiliar with adversarial attacks, I want to very briefly motivate them. You can train computer vision uh, models to accurately predict uh, certain objects, for example, street signs, and then you can test them on unseen data. And if you've done it right, they will work very well on the unseen data, but they are very sensitive to distribution shifts. And what I mean uh, but that is shown in this image. So you can apply this perturbation, which is kind of like a noise pattern on top of this stop sign. And then it will fool the network to think that this is a yield sign instead of a stop sign, even though that this perturbation is barely visible to the human eye. So most interestingly is that these kind of perturbations are not necessarily limited to this kind of gradient attacks or which look like noise, uh, but you could also place strategically uh, a piece of black tape somewhere in the street sign and then fool your computer vision model. And if you think all of the safety critical applications in which computer vision has uh, been very successfully, this is of course very scary. So think about you know self-driving cars that suddenly uh, don't break in front of a stop sign just because somebody tampered with the stop sign. So a common way to kind of mitigate this issue or, or do a defense against it is to perform adversarial training, which means that during training of your model, you find the worst case perturbation that fools your network and you re-inject it into the training data. So effectively you synthetically generate like worst case images um, and you tell your model, hey, you've done, you've done bad on this image, relearn that, please. And this works very well, but of course you have now suddenly much more data and finding these worst case perturbations is also very costly. So adversarial training heavily increases your training time. So therefore, it's, it's kind of interesting to understand from a fundamental level what adversarial training does and interpret it um, to perhaps be able to find a better solution and just to design intrinsically a robust uh, models. And so to understand the differences, we wanted to take a look at the convolution filters that these models learn. And we have done so by downloading 71 robust uh, models, that is models trained with adversarial training from the robust bench uh, leaderboards, which were trained for Cypher 10, Cypher 100 and ImageNet. And they were trained to withstand L infinity bound attacks. And then we extracted all the architectures that are present in these models, trained them without adversarial training and then we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of the convolution filters. So the first thing we try to understand is where are the shifts that happen in models? So we compare normal against adversarially trained models side-by-side by, -side, by depth, and we compare the filters and see where are they different. So, and what you can see is that there is a kind of somewhat expected um, difference in the and of the model, so in the very deepest layers. Um, but you can also see that the highest difference between normal and uh, adversarially trained model is seen on the Cypher 10 data set. On Cypher 100, the difference is smaller and on ImageNet, there is barely any difference. So it's kind of interesting. It seems like adversarial training has the most impact on very small data sets. The other thing that you can see in this plot is that there is a high shift in the very first layer. So if you look at the very first decile, which is from 0% uh, to 10% of the model depth, there is almost no shift. But in the very first layer, there appears to be a very high shift. So something must be happening there. Something um, is entirely different in adversarially trained models.
And we can study this by simply visualizing the filters. And what we see if we look at the first layer from standardly trained models, so normal models, well, then you'll see all kinds of filters that do more or less meaningful transformations. It's a bit hard to understand what they actually do. Um, but if you look at adversarially trained models, they have very distinct filters that uh, pretty much repeat themselves just with different weights. So the interesting thing about those filters is that they only learn the center weight, which is pretty much the same thing as a one-time one convolution. And I will talk about that in a second. If we look at the last layer, we see that for standard training, uh, models show a very repeating pattern. So this looks almost like a Gauss filter that is repeated over and over just on different scales. Whereas uh, adversarial training generates slightly more diverse filter patterns. So we wanted to really understand what this first layer does, because this is very distinct. It's also the first layer, so it's kind of easy to uh, visualize the feature maps. And uh, we did this by inputting a simple image of a cat. Um, so it has a little bit of background there and it has a foreground, which is a human leg wearing jeans and, and a shoe. And then we compared what happens uh, with the feature maps if we insert the clean sample and if we insert it with an adversarial perturbation on top. So the interesting thing is that if you look at the difference between the activations, you'll see that um, there is no difference in specific objects. So we call them region of interest in our paper, like uh, the cat or the leg, and uh, also in one in one image, the background. So it seems like these filters can successfully eliminate perturbations from specific regions in a way that the following uh, part of the network doesn't has, have to worry about the perturbations anymore and can just classify the data more easily. Our uh, second part of the analysis was related to filter quality. This is something we have established in our main paper, which is called CNN FilterDB and was presented uh, at the CVPR 22 main conference. So what you see here is a ResNet 18 that was trained on Cypher 10 and every row in this image represents the first, uh, I think 32 filters per layer. And you can see that the deeper you go into the model, the more sparse the filters will become. So you have actually a lot of filters that are very sparse. They have a low magnitude and they don't really contribute to the feature maps uh, beyond noise. So you can pretty much prune them away. Uh, you wouldn't hurt your network um, and you only have very, very few filters that actually do meaningful transformations. And the second part you see here is a highly repetitive pattern, um, especially in the last three layers. You see the pattern of the filters is always the same. It's just differently scaled, um, sometimes inverted, but uh, it's also questionable if this is uh, a good filter or if this uh, couldn't perhaps be replaced by more sophisticated filters. So something is going on in this model. And Again, in our main paper, we, we uh, determined um, two metrics upon which we study this. I, I won't go into details, but um, they're called uh, variance entropy. And we have also created another one just for this paper, which is called orthogonality, which measures the orthogonality between entire filter banks. So you can uh, estimate how different feature maps will be. And we see pretty much what I've also shown you in the distribution shift at the very beginning of the presentation. There is a difference between um, uh, robust and normal models. And that difference kind of closes down and becomes almost zero when you go to more complex data sets. But the interesting part here is so adversarial training seems to have an impact on the filter quality. It seems to improve filter quality by all the metrics that we see. So whether it's sparsity, whether it's uh, variance entropy or orthogonality. But if you look at ImageNet, for example, 
the models there already have a high uh, filter quality. So, but they are not by default robust to adversarial noise. So it seems like filter quality is necessary to achieve robustness, but it's not the only cause. Still, we believe it would be very interesting to see if um, you can actually regularize your network to increase the filter quality during training and whether this uh, might give you a little bit of a boost in terms of robust accuracy. So um, I want to thank you very much for your attention. And these are the two main papers uh, that uh, covered this. So the first one is adversarial robustness through the lens of convolution filters, which is this work. Um, but it's basically a specialized version of our CVPR main paper, CNN filter DB. Um, so if you're curious about the metrics and also generally about convolution filters, then I suggest you read that main paper. Um, all the code is also available for CNN filter DB. We actually even uploaded the entire data set that we use. So you can use that one. And if you scan the QR code, it will take you directly to the um, adversarial robustness um, GitHub page. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.